I'm doing this. But we, uh, many years ago, I put up a, a lesson. We've gotten in the free section here at Totally Guitars on Puffed Magic Dragon. Now, this is a song played can be played lots of different ways, as I as I pointed out in my uh, in the in the lesson. You really just strum through the chords, pick through them any way you want. Do some Travis picking. You could do some arpeggios. You could do a folk strum. You could do a country strum. It's it's really versatile. And uh, but recently, questions have come up about how to really play it the right way. And I'm going to stand by one interest. Well, no, I'm going to say there is no right way to play it. But we could just for the sake of fun and interest and, and trying something maybe new to a lot of you, uh, learn to play at least the introduction. This lesson is only going to be on what you just heard there, the first eight measures. But it's exactly what Peter Yarrow played on the 1963 recording on their second album, Move and Peter, Paul and Mary, of course we're talking about. And this is what you usually, usually hear on the live, uh, not the live versions, but any of the greatest hits versions. Of course they did it, they re-recorded it in 1969 on Peter, Paul, and Mommy, uh, added some mandolin and, and dressed it up a little bit. But um, back when Peter was still a very young man, he did his finger picking like, uh, like Merle Travis with really only thumb and one finger, keeping an alternating bass going. And that's the way this was done in the studio in 1963. Now there was a second guitar part. We're going to take a look at that. Anyway, we'll talk, talk about the uh, second guitar part that you can hear very faintly, but clearly in the left channel, if you uh, separate your stereo on the, uh, on the old recording. Um, let's see, a couple interesting things about the song. They do it capo to the second fret, putting it in the key of A. We're gonna, I'm going to take the capo off and I'm going to talk about it in G, because that's what you want to think about, and that will definitely help with the second guitar part, is to not cross, cross the streams there, and, uh, and worry about one person thinking, G chords down here and another thing, A chords up here without the capo. So, um, but also, the controversy about what the heck the song is about is, I think, a bunch of rubbish. Um, the, the real story seems to go that Peter Yarrow in 1958 found a poem typed in, sitting in, his type, in a typewriter at a friend's house, uh, written by his friend Lenny Lipton. And uh, he had left it there, and it was just about the loss of innocence, childhood, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Peter eventually turned it into a song, not really, and, and he was a student, I believe, at Cornell at the time, uh, not really having any idea about the drug world hadn't really caught on yet with the, with the pre-folk, at least, anyway. So it uh, seems very unlikely that all these references pe people read into it are, uh, are real. Anyway. Uh, I think that's all I want to tell you about it. I've, I've got tablature to both guitar parts, and we'll just talk about the main thing I'm going to talk about here is the right hand. So in a second, we'll get in and talk about what uh, what Peter did with his right hand. The chords are right there on the chart um, that is floating around here somewhere. So coming up, just a little digression, tangential, anyway, about uh, of the picking that, that Peter Yarrow did in this and. We'll talk about also turning it into an instrumental, picking out the melody, and this may this may become a progressive lesson. Like I may uh, may decide to add on to this after, uh, depending on what kind of response we get. So, okay, coming up, a look at the real introduction to Puff Magic Dragon. <laughs> 